coming to you from Strange and Things Studio in Ventura, California. I'm Karen. I'm Katie. I'm Anne. And this is the Strings Unraveled Book Club. So, what did we read this month? This one's book was Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers. And that alone was enough for me to pick up the book. Because I'm like, ah, that sounds interesting. (laughs) I knew you loved unsolicited advice. That's why I keep offering. (laughs) She can't give enough. (laughs) Please, tell me more. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) Kind of. (laughs) No, we're totally joking. I'm okay, working, yeah, I'm yeah, working we're, on we're, less unsolicited advice. I promise. Actually, I like. I always, for both of you, I always get good advice. I thought you were going to say you always get unsolicited advice. <laughs> good I'm like, advice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Just because it's unsolicited, I didn't doesn't know that make was a thing bad. that I did. Right, I don't know. That it's a key <laughs> no, problem. No, no, I'm saying I never said the word unsolicited. I said I always get good advice. Let's call it oh, feedback. Thank you. Call it I get. I give. I value your feedback. So whether I asked for it or whether it was unsolicited, <laughs> I asked for it or not, <laughs> I still value it. Oh, so, oh my gosh. yeah, it's a I'm watching. Title, right? I'm watching you do this thing, and were you measuring to see if they're the same? No, I know they're not the same. For a second, I thought they were, though. It was a lie. I'm lying. Because part of me is like, yeah, I've tried that, and I squeeze it, and I make it work, and then I find that the. the but no, I can see you've got yeah. it spot on. No, I mean, no, I still have some rows to go. <laughs> yeah, but I I wanted to know where I was. I I've abandoned this. Should we talk about what, what I was going to say? What are you knitting? Yeah. What is? <laughs> what are we talking about? Uh, well, I am trying so hard to finish the things I start. Don't we all try that? Yeah. Uh, well, I I kind of gave up on trying that. <laughs> Fair enough. We all go through uh, chapters, right? <laughs> I'm um really 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 close to finishing my ghost in the orchard uh best mm. which yeah. she's supposed to name these all after cocktails yeah there's a baby cocktails pattern right but i yeah i i have not been able to find what cocktail is a ghost in the orchard <laughs> i would have to think it's maybe apple based well that's fair it kind of sounds like it hmm. i have no idea i've never heard of it i would think I've like Googled a spiced a apple and you can't find anything well, well you just have to invent it yeah. or maybe she's changed over the years maybe you know. um she she's given up drinking and we don't know that's like something that she's working <laughs> on <laughs> but it's in your name uh, so i'm i'm working on my maybe it's baby actor. mocktails now <laughs> yeah maybe um, I am so, so close. I just need to finish the back and then do the neckline and, um, armhole edging. Nice. But I didn't leave myself notes when I set this down a few months ago. So recouping where I am in the armhole and where I am in the chart. I always think I don't need notes. I'll, I'll remember. When read I'll your learn. knitting. My knitting is the I notes. read my, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but then I feel like, oh, but I do this all day for other people. And then I have to sit down with one of my projects. I'm like, where the hell am I on this thing? <laughs> God, a smart person would have left herself a note. Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't you write anything down? <laughs> I'm knitting the world's most boring project, which is just a plain garter stitch scarf. But it's a fun yarn. Is that a new Rasta? Or um, something Rasta adjacent? It's some skein of Rasta I had in my stash. I don't know what the color is. Um, I needed a sample for our beginning knitting class that I'm teaching on Saturday. So I am I cast on a very simple skinny garter stitch scarf and uh Away I go. Very See how exciting. long. Right now, it's a. I'd say maybe six or seven inches. By the end of tonight, I'll tell you how much longer. There it you is. go. Nice. <laughs> so we have beginning knitting and beginning crochet starting the same weekends. That's yeah. okay. That works. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. What are you working on, Karen? I will see. I'm I'm happy to have starditis. <laughs> this yeah. is this is a justified starditis. Well, right on. Because it always I'm is doing a co- collaboration with an indie dyer. Um, with her collection new yarn color collection that'll come out in september and um so the yarn came yay <laughs> i was the one you were talking about on the last podcast yeah yeah so Thanks. i swatched um i've got new swatches because new colors um these are the real colors um one is called mulch and it's a very kind of a gray kind of a like a grunge lavender is what i'm thinking of uh, you know, if you've ever, if you do sewing and you know, that grunge fabric line, how you get a color, but it's got some gray tones to it and just kind of, um, and of course sparkles for days. And so I have it in a tonal and then I have this one called summer cactus, 
which I love. I love them both, but for different reasons. I the 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 semi solid shows it shows the stitch pattern. Um, I don't know a little better, it, but then it doesn't because I get I get different kinds of color groupings with the multicolor. Um, it's kind of a gardeny. Um, it's got darker purples, some some light greeny like chartreuse colors it, there's so many shades in here from a lavender to a deep purple um and just i like the name so as a lover of cacti what do you think of this does this say cactus to you maybe i don't know enough cactus gardens to to know what colors cacti come from come in and their yeah. their flowers i know they're kind of purpley toned cactuses i don't know what they are yeah i'm like i don't know enough sure about <laughs> succulent cactus, cactus. cactus yeah maybe more succulent i don't know mm -hmm. i don't know anything about them i i picked the 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 multicolor one because i felt like it would go really well with the purple when they're photographed together so i'm nice. excited yeah, it's the, the the she accidentally swapped the colors quantities i was going to have but i think it's a happy accident because this multicolor one um, is going to be the cropped version and the hip length version of this. It's sort of a sweater poncho-y kind of thing. Um, I'm just calling it a sweater because it's cute. You know. Has a neck hole and Has a neck holes. hole and a couple of arm holes and there a you go. place for your legs to come out. Sounds so. like a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise it's a sack. Yeah, right? then it's a sleeping bag. <laughs> good, good discerning. <laughs> Always good to have that bottom hole open, you know. Anyway, so yeah, so that's what I'm working on. Uh, I the each piece like in, in size eight. Uh, it's not like size like U.S. sizes. This is just like this is the first size, the second size, the eighth size in the pattern out of thirteen. Um, only takes like thirty eight rows, and I'm I've done I've done two. Yes, <laughs> so that's cool. Um, yeah. So that's what we're work what's in our hands tonight. As you hear us, maybe you'll hear a little tapping of. Like my crochet, my Tunisian crochet. It's a, I should say it's a Tunisian crochet project. So um, sometimes the cable gets a little bit long. So on onward to the book. This book was Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers. And um, if you're a murderer, maybe you don't want to read this book. <laughs> or maybe you do. Or maybe you do. <laughs> um, let me, I'm going to read, uh, re I know she has her own little blurb in the in the book cover, but I'm going to read what what they wrote on Goodreads because I thought it was really interesting. Put the kettle on. There's a mystery brewing. Tea shop owner, matchmaker, detective, 60-year-old self-proclaimed tea expert Vera Wong enjoys nothing more than sipping a good cup of, of oolong and some healthy detective work on the internet, a.k.a. checking up on her son to see if he's dating anybody yet. <laughs> But when Vera wakes up one morning to find a dead man in the middle of her tea shop, it's going to take a lot, a lot more than a strong Luxing to fix things. Knowing she'll do better than a better job than the police possibly could, because nobody sniffs out a wrongdoing quite like a suspicious Chinese mother with time on her hands. Vera decides it's time to get down to, it's time. Let me try this again. Decides it's down to her to catch the killer. Nobody spills the tea like this amateur amateur sleuth. So I have some questions. Um, so first of all, just what did you feel about the book overall? I felt like it was delightful. I thought it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> did now did you did you both just do the auto audible version or did you Yeah. Yeah. I listened to it. Mm -hmm. I listened to it. I felt like it, it went quickly. There were times where she kinda got on my nerves. And then I fell a little more in love with her, even though she was still kind of, kind of wacky. I was glad that I listened to it just for the sake of names, especially of uh, Chinese teas and yes. things that I yeah. didn't yeah. know what they were. I'm like, I'm glad I'm not trying to read this and Google and figure out what everything <laughs> is because yeah. that would have been harder. But yes, I listened didn't to it. Didn't you guys have like a Chinese mom in your friend group? No. No. I did. And this made me like Miss Annie. Her name's Annie. And it made me miss Annie a lot. Vera's a little nicer than Annie. Mm. <laughs> but, um, well, she's but fictional. I, I, miss, <laughs> I miss my friend's Chinese mom. 
Now, this is the same author of Dial A for Aunties, which I just finished yesterday. Mm. Oh, so good. And there, I guess she's, there's Dial A for Aunties, Four Aunties and a Wedding, <laughs> which is the sequel. And there was supposed to be a third one mm. that was in the works. But if uh, in the epilogue, she tells a story about how this story came along. And she just had this rough idea, no real plot, but just about a woman a lonely old woman in a tea shop finds a dead body go <laughs> and so she got she got off uh well off schedule with her other book she didn't intend to her editor and her publisher both said hey we love this when can you get it done put the other one on the shelf and mm. she's like oh oh okay um i don't know oh so it just sort of came together very very quickly uh-huh um so uh yeah so i think it's a happy little little breakup in the other series um i am enjoying the the four weddings and a wet four aunties and a wedding which definitely kind of is a sequel to the dilate so if you like this story keep reading her stuff it's it's she's got some fun stuff this did make um (coughs) book riot's like top list of best mysteries i think it was like the 10 best mysteries this year so Mm. far yeah, I enjoy a good mystery novel. I thought it was mm-hmm. fun. They're they're a fun break in not break, but a different kind of read than I normally do because I like I like I like a good mystery or like mm-hmm. a mystery thriller kind of movie where you're trying to figure things out and stuff. And and this was just like I like a a mystery where I feel like I'm close, but I don't get there, and then I'm surprised. Yeah, because sometimes they're too obvious, and you figure it out. And sometimes they come out of the blue and you're like, well, that character was hardly in it. Like, how could they have been the murderer? You know, mm-hmm. I felt like this this mystery was done well that I was like almost on top of it, but it's still surprised at the end. <coughs> so I liked that. I thought it was cheesy. Yeah. And I didn't really like Vera for the most part, um, <laughs> which makes it hard to enjoy a novel yeah. when it, yeah. the main character is somebody that you think is obnoxious but that's the point like i think she's supposed to be but also endearing but that made it harder for me to like to feel for her i guess i don't know yeah well but i do feel like some of the annoyance is written into the story yeah the other characters are not just smitten with her right away no I, I they understand all it's feel like she's a meddling you know they're not she's like oh you, like a lot of head smacking like, yeah oh i can't believe vera 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 <laughs> so um i appreciate that the I, I felt the same way too i was even listening to her i felt she was kind of i was just kind of annoyed with her at first as a character and and all the and there were times where i was like when are they gonna really get to the dead body <laughs> they really haven't addressed why the dead body was there in the first place yeah. they do get to it it did take a long time to figure out why it was there specifically but i didn't really care about that aspect no, it, of it you know because she's trying to figure out who the murderer is not yeah. necessarily how they ended up dead in her tea shop specifically but mm-hmm. yeah. yeah because how they ended up really wasn't as important as the people we actually don't ever learn why he goes to the tea shop we learn who the murderer is. no, no I, thought, the murderer no, I thought says why, why he thinks very, very, that very... he's there oh to leave it as a clue <coughs> yeah okay yeah i do remember that being said but i thought it was um vera still thinking like theorizing yeah i mean we only ever know why the character thinks that they ended up there because you you never hear like the story of that night from any sort of other perspective other than the person who is the murderer telling you about it. So mm-hmm. we just assume. Yeah, you never really. Ca- yeah. So, um, so we kind of talked about her as the main character and narrator of the story, but I kind of felt like she, she was part of the story, but she wasn't uh, each chapter had a different voice had the voice of the person speaking for that chapter a little bit there was a multiple points of view and i kind of i do appreciate that the top of the chapter was labeled with who was talking well it wasn't necessarily them they weren't the narrator but it was focused on that character yeah there's that part of their they're part of the story yeah did you so We've heard how Katie feels. We feel how we feel. And did you find her likable, relatable, annoying, or something else? All those things. Yeah, like, all <laughs> yes, those things. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Um, but I liked her. Like, I liked her in the end. Yeah. Um, 
I never really disliked her. I was just like, oi, <laughs> stop. <laughs> yeah, I think we all sort of know a person like that. If you don't have, like, I don't have a, a Chinese mother in my friend group like Anne does, but I definitely have older women either in my family or that I know of that I can relate this character to. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I think it's cross-culturally something that you can uh, identify with, but I suppose I, without knowing any uh, older Chinese mothers that that is sort of how they uh, how they tend to be, right? I guess. I, I don't know. I'm sure there's a, a large spectrum of, of people in that age group, but from this book and what they mm-hmm. are telling us about... That seems to be like uh, the standard. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So the setting, the story is set in San Francisco's Chinatown. Did you learn anything new or interesting about the cultural, the history, or the community? I don't know if I did because no. I was thinking about um, the Joy Luck Club mm-hmm. reading this, just like the you know mothers and stuff like that. Yeah. Which does that take place in San Francisco too? I think, I it, think does. it does. It takes place in yeah. a Chinatown, and I yeah, that's what I was. I'm thinking pretty sure about. it's in San Francisco. Yeah. So no, I don't feel like I I learned anything from this book about that place necessarily. What did you think about her rival, her business rival? Oh, I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, that was cute. Yeah. <laughs> the book was cute. Like that's it's how. Cute. Yeah, yeah, it was cute. Yeah. Yeah, her. I was. was the, it made I me hungry. Her, yes, <laughs> I kind of wanted to try those buns. The teas were killing me, actually. Like I wanted them all. <laughs> so that is actually uh, there's it leads me to another question. What do you think about the role of tea in the story? How did Vera use tea to connect with her clients, to heal their ailment ailments, and to express her emotions? And I just want to say, I really just want to go and have her make some special. Have her just look at me. And know exactly the right kind of tea exactly for me that I need, need that day. Right. Or the it's food just, she it's made. magical. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, uh, Ricky, you look constipated. <laughs> you need this food. You need this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess I was more intrigued by all of the delicious sounding. Because I'm not necessarily like a tea person. Yeah. Like it sounded nice, but I would like for her to cook me something. <clears throat> yeah. I want her to like look at me and judge me and be like, you need to eat this thing. And yeah. for me to be offended, but then be like, you were right. I yeah. didn't need to eat Yeah. Now that. I feel so much better. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um. Like, the tea illustrated her, like, I think you nailed it. It illustrates her um, intuitive read on people, mm-hmm. which is not always right. <laughs> no. Um, I but, wanna re- but it seems right with tea. I want to pause, though, before I lose a yeah. thread. Yeah, yeah. So, Katie, you brought up the Jolly Light Club. Like, this is a very different mother. Yeah. Like I was that occurred to me of like, this is such a different representation yes. of of the Chinese mother, even though I think it's still a like cultural template. <laughs> sure. Mm-hmm. But there were four different mothers in that. Yeah. Book, right? and, well, then I got thinking about them, like how different were each of those mothers? Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, they were and they weren't. You yes. Know? Um, but this mother would be kind of the contemporary of those characters. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just interesting. She's like, where she notes where she's very open minded <laughs> or where. Um, yes. <laughs> I think my, my favorite moment with her is between her and Julia. And um, she's like, well, what do you actually do with your time? And she's like, well, I take care of my daughter. And she's like, no, I'm not saying that's a bad job. I'm seeing that Marshall didn't let you have anything yeah. else. I I think that's a good job, you know. Yeah, I like <laughs> it's the what way, I did. I liked the way they talked about that because it's yeah. like, what do you do all day? Yeah, she's like, I'm a stay at home mother, and you expect Vera to be like, well, yeah, but what else? But yeah. she's like, no, I understand. Like yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. full time job. Yeah, yeah, uh, you're right though. It's it's a different perspective on on the mother in that way because. I mean, it's a very different kind of book. Like, the Joy Luck Club yeah. is much more heavy and focuses on, like, the relationship strain between mothers and daughters. And, and it, it might be very different if Vera had a daughter. That's true. But she ah. has one son to be yep. proud of and to uh, harass all day long. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, but back to the tea. Um, tea mm-hmm. is beautiful. I want all the tea. Yeah, uh, it made me want tea, but I didn't have any when I was reading okay. it. But this was mostly a, a driving book for me. Yeah. But it was, um, I did like the, uh, it made me sad to think of all of her beautiful ingredients and in her. Destroyed. Well, no, but just, oh, sitting, but. But just, oh. <laughs> but just sitting there and not being Don't reveal used, yet. you know, yeah. like she didn't, yeah. she had one customer, which is sad, but that's, you know, I think the way of a lot of small 
in my Lollipops. in my brain i felt like okay so maybe she wasn't i thought how is she no one trafficking her place um besides oh before we get very very far the name of her shop is Vera Wang's World Famous Tea Shop. I felt so validated. Just, just so everybody knows, her name is Vera Wang. It is it was not an it was not an accident that she named her shop Vera Wang. Yes, I was very validated that we immediately learned that Vera explains her similar sounding name. Yep. Because you feel yeah. like a real dumb white person every time I was like Vera Wang. This somebody book is called Vera Wong. Somebody asked me, <laughs> but it was a marketing today. Yes. <laughs> somebody or not today. Somebody asked me here, like, what book are you reading? And I said the name of it, and she goes Vera Wang, and I was like, no, Vera Wong. <laughs> <laughs> See, and just like that, she was thinking, well, if people think that Vera Wang had a tea shop, they would come more. But, and I don't know if maybe the nature of tea or online, may, online, she couldn't do what she was. She couldn't do her intuitive thing with an online order ahead app unless you are willing to t share a little bit of your story in your day and do like a little question and answer so she can formulate it before you come and then you get what you get. I feel constipated today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it yeah. didn't sound like in the book or maybe I missed it that the shop had ever been successful. It was never wildly heated. Right. No, no, the world famous was always, everything about that name was highly exaggerated. But I don't, I don't know if it means that, that the fact that it was so dead, like she's got one customer was a, a sort of a, like the shop was a victim of, you know, online stores and, no. and larger Starbucks and stuff like that, except that it just never was. I, I feel like. I think it was early, it, it, early days. It like was, she, it, she had good success. business early, but. Over the years, things trickled and trickled and trickled. Be um, just life changes, maybe even the traffic in that area. You know, just foot traffic might have gone to a more a, a street that might have been better kept. And yet, you would think that like the sticky bun, the bakery next door, must get pretty good traffic. People just don't necessarily go. Or I guess it's across the street. Was it next door or across the street? I think it was next door. Next door. Yeah, because she would come around and look into the window. But so the the foot traffic was, I think, there, but there was just something. Also the state of, I think, as you get into the story and you hear the state of her shop, it's not very clean. The lighting is not good. It's not well kept up. And it doesn't feel like a place that people want to stop it, it and spend didn't time in. It probably look very inviting no, from the outside. Not from the outside. Um, so... Our conversation it's could go... It's aging. It's neglected. Kind of yeah. like Vera. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Vera does not neglect herself, but the world is passing her by. So there's there's a couple of different ways that our our, our, our question thread can go. Um, we talked a little bit briefly about, you, like you said, you weren't in tea, but into her food. There's a question that could go with that one. And oh. yeah, let's go there next. Um, so her cooking figures prominently in the novel. If I, and I was trying to, because I listened to it, I didn't, I couldn't, I do have the physical book and I couldn't remember what part of the book, I should have put footnote, I should have like stopped and did a little bookmark on the audible part. What, what it, do you remember if there was a dish that she made that, um, that you would like most to eat? Um, um, the beef noodles that the baby was eating yes, sounded really that good. That sound good. Um, there's something else. Oh, like the the Asian chicken soup that she gives Oliver sounded really yummy. Yeah. Also, and the like, I would love to go to the beach and have a picnic with her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd have to like rewind back to know, but all of them sounded delicious. It felt like she made a each one. They they ate Chi you know family style where you everyone got a little bit of everything. But I felt like she each person had a dish made for them. Yeah, she appro she approached her cooking the way she approached her tea. It was very mindful and thoughtful, very nurturing. I think she that is where her mothering comes in is in her tea making and her cooking. She's nurturing and trying to do things to help them help their bodies be better because it feeds their soul. The lion's head meatballs that she gave. Oh her yeah. Cops. Yes, that sounded great. There was also some garlic beef thing that I was like, I want to eat that. Yeah, pretty much. I just, I want. Yeah, <laughs> she could expand the tea shop to make it a restaurant. I'd like to eat one of those buns from uh, what's her name's patisserie and yes. go next door and have a cup of tea. Yeah. 
<laughs> or the one that uh, Vera made to show that she can make a better egg. Yes. <laughs> She's so funny. I'm like, what? I thought, what would her daughter like? <laughs> <laughs> the roll, pooping out the cream. <laughs> yes. Oh, so funny. Um, okay, let, let's just talk, touch on some of the other characters. Um, we have Riki, Sana, Oliver, and J- Julia. Um, and let me just recap. If um, Julia was the wife of the dead man. And um, they have a little daughter. And um, then the Oliver was the, the dead man's twin brother. Mm-hmm. And um, Sana. Which one was Sana? Sana is the art student who had her work oh, stolen. Mm-hmm. That's right. Because I never saw the spelling. It's R-A-R-I-K-I is Ricky. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Ricky was the guy who made the bug computer oh he was the the software guy whatever it was called yeah Um, yeah program okay Um, scalping bot bot that's the word yeah if do you is is, was a particular which one of those characters if you guys could just pick one of those characters and tell a little bit about their story i want to talk a little bit about the dead guy (laughs) which there is the dead guy marshall uh, marshall um which was we know marshall's that are very nice (laughs) true um <laughs> hey, he's fine um but th- Mar- I, that was one of the things i had a problem with this book it was like <coughs> we need a bad guy to be the one that's murdered right so he's mm-hmm. like like the worst guy you could think of like he's a bad guy oh he's awful. yeah he's very yeah. awful but like he doesn't have any sort of reason to be a bad guy like there's nothing oh some people are just pathologically bad yeah, yeah. which <laughs> i guess is something that happens but it's like he was just a dick the whole yep. time like his he whole up, child he was a bad kid i think that- but some i got the sense that some of that came from their father actually their father well i'm sure if you encourage one child over the other and and let them get away with things you know because he was able to blame everything on his brother <laughs> which i think that's just his own doing and then for his badness to be encouraged by his family like yeah that's gonna make it worse but like you're saying, like I think he was just a bad dude just for the sake of being a bad dude. Yeah. You know? whole, but like why would she marry him? He was exciting. He wasn't he was charming when he wanted to be. Uh, there's a lot of he's hyper con- he's this hyper controlling jerk, but well he'd been emotionally abusing her since high school, so yeah. when you create that kind of emotional yeah. abuse, you yeah. get to um, Yeah. I mean, you get what you want. Look, she had a place that she could, she had a wouldn't she have a scholarship to like to go to a famous school. I and don't know if she had a scholarship, but she had plans to go. She to had plans a, to go a prestigious school, a prestigious school that she had gotten accepted to, and she had to give it up. She didn't have to. She chose she to. She chose to give it up. Give no, it up. she was convinced to give it up. Right. That's right. She was. Ki- that's true. Right. That's true. That's. I don't want to victim blame. Uh, because she was. She was. She was emotionally abused. She was manipulated and manipulated. Yeah. Um, to the point that. Like I mean, look, you know it's bad when their two-year-old is afraid of daddy. She, it was just always cowering and running away. And and when when Oliver came, the the child was very frightened. Like, whoa, you know, daddy's been gone and life's been good. And now, is this you? Is this daddy? But it's not daddy. I'm confused. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So Marshall is the center that brings them sort of all together. They all had a connection, but they didn't know each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, Julia knew Oliver. Julia and Oliver were best buds in, in high school and Oliver really liked her, but she didn't really, I think she kind of liked him, but then she was dazzled by his, by Marshall. He never tried anything. So she didn't know. That's right. Yeah. She didn't really know. And so. I was glad that at the end that they didn't end up together. Yes. Yeah. So I was like, I'm that w- I would be happy for them, but that's icky. Yeah. But yeah. I'm yeah. glad that that didn't happen. Yeah. And that, yeah. and that, uh, what is the baby's name? That she just, Emma, get, Emma, Emma. Yes, Emma gets to have her uncle in her yeah. life and, and they get to be a nice little happy family. Yeah. But mm-hmm. yeah, I was a little, uh, icked by, yeah. by that. If, if that's where we were going. So. No, I'm glad that is not how that worked out either. <laughs> yeah. I think he even talked about that a little bit. Like, he yeah. really cared for her, but he's like, no, that just I is too... On. He even said, yeah, <laughs> that's too weird. <laughs> but, um, and so it's interesting that in the same way that he was controlling 
his wife, he was also controlling uh, Sana in the same way. I mean, at first they painted as it. I I I thought, oh my gosh, she had a mistress, but it, not it wasn't. A, she wasn't. I didn't get that read from it, but um, you didn't really know what the thing was that he did that was so bad until the near the end of the book. I mm-hmm. I sort of just thought maybe he stole like her physical art, yeah, and was you know selling it or whatever. I didn't see like the uh, the whole like NFT side of it with the bots and the computer and the and the making it big and all that. Like that mm-hmm. came in when we started to learn Riki's. Story. side of the story uh-huh. but yeah i didn't get the read that it was like a like a affair kind of thing Mm-mm. but i was afraid of that at the beginning but then then it was clear that it was not yeah um, which i'm surprised that that wasn't an aspect of the story because he seems like the sort of dude to have definitely have had an affair or two yeah but maybe just yeah. not with any of the characters that we knew from this book right? yeah that's true um so let's see what else. So the theme there's a the theme of found family is in the story. How did Vera and the other characters form bonds with each other and overcome their loneliness and isolation? And was it I mean Vera basically finds a way to move herself into <laughs> the, the, the the poor widow's house. <laughs> and that part was like, oh, come on, but but on the other hand, she was really helping. She didn't she didn't engineer that part. It's that was like a she, happy accident. It's not like she weaseled her way into this family. Yeah. She was invited yeah. and she didn't want to necessarily go, I don't think, at the beginning. Mm-mm. But it's not like a, the sort of, like, we all came together because we were all screwed over by the same guy and now we're best friends because they didn't know that they all were affected by the same guy until after they were That's friends true. with each other. That's true. Um, I think they just all were friends with vera and i think that when you have that common like person that everybody loves you're like well if you like that person and i like that person then we could probably like each other you know um well and she brought them each exactly what they needed yeah Mm -hmm. you know how are you not going to be enamored of that person even if they are abrasive at first true like nobody likes to be you know led by the nose to the thing they need but um Unless you don't know that it's happening to you. True. Which I don't think they did. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how, how how could you not fall for that person? Yeah. Julia got, you know, help and encouragement. And, mm-hmm. and she had a family. Yeah. But what? But what happened? Her family was not there. They didn't come and it's surround her. It's not about her. her family, guys. It's a. I understand. It's about her abuser. The first thing an abuser like that does is isolate oh, you from your support. They did talk system. about it. Yeah. They talked about it. But I was that. hoping that there would be a a healing of that, right? Of some way, right. like she called her mother or her, yeah, you know, her dad. She talked to her something. sister again, or so, you know yeah. what I mean, which we didn't get, which is fine because it's you know it's only so much book, right? Do we do we think that she even reached out to them, or do you think that they've been so separated that she wouldn't even have known how to? I mean, maybe this. after the events of this, yeah, book. that's like a yeah. journey. A journey she'll you know take some time. Yeah, that's true. Maybe she just wasn't in a place where she could until Vera helped her heal. We only know these characters yes, yes. for a few weeks. Yes. Right. That's true. I did like in when they all were at her hospital room and her son shows up and he says, who the heck are all you people? And she's, they're like, um, we're her family. And he's like, <laughs> uh, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of Vera's son, Tilly, uh, I, I'm not quite sure what his whole name was, but Tilly Tilbert. is Tilbert. Yeah. I don't remember what his chinese name was, i don't but know Tilbert. that they ever tell us his chinese name <coughs> i think they did but i don't yeah. know what it was okay. it started with a t but okay tilbert so Tilly. what do you think of her relationship with her son i mean how do they communicate with each other and what challenges did they face i mean i understand why he didn't keep answering her 20 you know a day 20 or plus a day email texts to or phone calls yeah for information and even if he had responded, would they have lessened? No, I don't think they would have. <laughs> no, I I definitely know people who I'm like, I understand why your children live on the opposite side of the country mm-hmm. from you, which sucks to say, but like, There's I reasons understand they have boundaries. why, you know? Yeah. And I totally understood why having Vera as a mother 
would be very difficult. Like having her as a friend or your neighbor or your, you know, your whatever, that's different. Like the, your relationship with your with your parents, with your mother is a whole other level. Mm-hmm. Yep. So having him on speed dial 24 seven to be like, did you poop today? Did you eat your vegetables? <laughs> did you ask for any girls to go out with you at your office? Did you check your TikTok account because there's this girl that's following you? Did you, you know, brush your teeth today? Did you oh, wake up at 4 a.m. today girls. like you should? It's yeah, like, oh my God, I would put her on mute yeah. like years yep. ago. Yep. Yep. I'd send her like a perfunctory text once a week to be like, hi mom, um, everything's good. Yeah. See you next week. <laughs> But, you know, I worry about this as a mom. Uh, when all your children are out in the world. Because, like, I don't call my mom very much. And yeah. It's evolved to that. But you used to talk to your mom every day. Yeah. Like, you used to be in each other's lives every day. Yeah. Like, I hope it's a gradual thing. I heard someone you know? say that 75% of your children's, of the time you spend with your children happens before the age of 12. Oh wow! Which is like oh, of your life? Yeah, I know because you're with them twenty four seven, right? Yeah. And so I would hope. Well, I mean, I don't know, but I mean, I see my mom all the time because we live together, right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a uh, it's an eggshell kind of relationship sometimes. Yeah. So except that at some point she got so busy with the found family. That she and didn't even tell him like, she didn't, anything. She, <laughs> and she stopped texting him about anything. And he actually noticed. He's like, they don't say if. He, and he started connecting with her like, uh, I haven't heard from you. you yeah. Know, how, and then he's got upset. You're not returning my text. It Things sort of changed. Right. Because, but that, that actually made me feel good because it, it made me feel like, okay, he. Yes, it's annoying, but he is still keeping tabs on that and except that he wasn't because his mom called and said oh there's a dead guy in my shop oh i stole a flash drive off his body i'm not going to give it to the cops and all he does is call her once a week to be like mom that's bad you should like what show up at her house talk to her in person like there's things going on real serious crisis this is very serious like you need more than just to text her and be like i'll call you later tonight and we'll talk about it except this is another thing. You get numb to that amount of attention, right? Yeah. And you are you don't know when to take her seriously. That's I don't true. know. I got to think the dead man and the police at your, at your at your mom's business, you would still come and but physically go. But it could have go, been the mom that cried wolf, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I have really texted you like so many times. And they're not in her shop or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, she kind of did cry wolf. <laughs> well, yes, she did. Yes. <laughs> Well, she, but, but she didn't cry to Tilly, did she? Or did she tell? No. Him? Yeah, that's no. when he checks up on her. He's like, "Oh, the shop got broken into, so now I'm it's now." She I'm didn't put. She did not push for the investigation for a reason. Well, the shop did get broken into. It did. She just it did. encouraged it. Yes. You know, she uh, she enhanced the situation. Baited it. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um. So we talked a little bit about her meddling in the lives of the suspects. Do you think it was helpful, harmful, intrusive, something else? Meddling in their lives? Yeah. Well, it was extremely intrusive. I mean, but it, it was also helpful. It turned out <laughs> helpful. Yeah. It wasn't really the right thing to do. And I was with, like, Ricky. I think it was Ricky on, on part of it. It's like, or maybe it was Sana. It's like, I think it was Sana. It's like, you don't have to be here. You don't have yeah. to talk to her. Yeah. Like, why are you here? You know? <laughs> yeah. like, I'm not Sana. telling you anything. <laughs> it was Sana because Ricky was like, oh my God, I could have told her no. Yes. <laughs> She's like, you don't have to go. You don't have to say anything to her. But he has a, you know, well, I think they both have uh, strong Asian mothers, right? Yes. Yeah. But yeah, I like that. I was on their team where I'm like, I'm not going to your house. I'm not telling you what I know. Like, this is none of your business. <laughs> But, I mean, it was uh, her meddling in the whole investigation. It probably would not have been solved if it hadn't been for her, right? But Yeah. But uh, huh? I loved yeah. when she was talking about, because y'all know I love CSI. Yes. And all of the police are like, I hate that freaking show. <laughs> I love that show. But I've heard Anne say, like, yeah, that's not a real thing. No. <laughs> but I'm on her t- side where I'm like, if I had to solve this problem, I'd be like, why aren't you taking fingerprints? Why aren't you collecting, like, hair samples? Why aren't you doing this? And why aren't you doing that? I'd be like, I've seen CSI. I know all of the things that you can do. And they're like, we don't do any of those things in real life. Nope. I mean, How- once the shop had been broken into, she's like, oh, now I am going to have to call the team. Yes. <laughs> I hate okay. those guys. <laughs> so, outlining the body, 
on the floor with Sharpie. <laughs> Permanent Sharpie. Yeah, she Sharpie. did a good job of it. Yeah. She, really would she you, should tell them to switch to Sharpie. Would you would you wash that later? Or would you let that be the part of the novelty of your place? Oh, I, I don't, think it goes to show that she doesn't care that much about her shop, honestly. That she yeah, just that she's looking for some something more interesting than her shop that you would take sharpie to the floor, floor. of your business <laughs> yeah yeah i mean if, if it's a like a hard floor you could get some uh <coughs> nail polish remover or yeah. something and get it up but i have the sense that it was like wood old wood flooring yeah <laughs> it was like oh yeah that wasn't coming up easy <laughs> okay what do you think of vera's moral code and sense of justice how do you how does she justify her actions and decisions throughout the story I think the majority of her actions are based on the fact that she knows that the police are not going to do what she thinks their job is, which I mean, (laughs) technically their job is to try and solve murders, right? If you were on the the homicide team or whatever, if that is the thing that even exists, but she knows that they're not going to try as hard as she wants them to. Right. And I think she sees a little shred of something exciting happening that she's going to be like, Oh, I gotta like follow this thread. Because she needs something in her life, right? And I think that's where a lot of her uh, uh, zest for uh, being a, a private investigator comes from. But I could see she would have a, a, a good career in that. Yeah, I think she's she got yeah. like, some natural talent in yeah. for sure. Yeah, I think she has a strong uh, sense for justice and wants to see um, I do the right like, people get... I feel like she needs a partner to keep her from going a little too far off. Probably. Yes. <laughs> Because Winifred, that's the lady's name next door. She and Winifred yeah. could maybe work together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, if they did combine and had a tea and bun you just shop. You need to knock down the wall in between and they would probably have delicious Absolutely. things. Yep. Except it's a load bearing wall, so it just oh, can't yeah, probably. No. <laughs> you might cut a, you can cut a whole, a, a, a pass a through. Right. A walkway, that's yeah. A good idea. Okay. So, a um, couple, couple last questions. Um. Oh, What did you think of the author's writing style and her use of humor? Did you enjoy the tone, the dialogue, the descriptions or something else? I thought it was well written. Like I would, I, I, I liked, um, I wouldn't say necessarily that the characters were believable. Like his, I mean, in, in most, uh, novels in, you know, in literature, if you wrote like normal people, your story would be boring. Yep. But yeah, yep. but I did like that they were funny. Uh, mm-hmm. Vera especially was funny. I don't think she intended to be funny, but in her own way, mm-hmm. um, in the way that she interacts with uh, the other people in the story, I think is funny and cute. So I liked it. Um, I have some fact criticisms. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, yes. Do share. Um, so, she refers to Sana attending CalArts and references it several times. Yeah. And the first time Sana is like feeling bad about herself that she dropped out of CalArts and that she's not living in Pasadena. Okay. So Otis I thought, is I, I totally the Pasadena about you. school and CalArts is the Valencia school. Oh, <laughs> I knew you would say something. <laughs> the other thing that I like kind of missed when I was listening, but I, and I'm like, did I hear that right? Anyone can put an obituary in the paper, but papers do not publish obituaries unless they can verify the death. So the day after someone picks you, you know, the coroner takes someone into their care, there's no funeral home available for a paper to verify the death with. I thought it was more like she ran an ad. It's that's why I wanted to look at the book again. It's Uh going to take us a space out. To ride an obituary ASAP. And any, so that's all managed by the same uh-huh, department. It's uh-huh. in the classifieds department. But to get that run, they're going to read the text. Um, yeah. And they're, because the uh, papers verify. have been sued for people putting fake obituaries in for people Ooh. who are still alive. Okay. <laughs> it's like the Beatles. Rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. Right, right. <laughs> so, like, those two things kind of like, oh, mm. <laughs> Like, your premise is based on this obituary getting published and them all coming to see you. <laughs> so when I was looking for book club discussions, I did come across a review that was very negative. Oh. Very negative. Cause it, and it's from something who had read the earlier work, Di- Di- Dial A for Aunties. And to, she was, 
I kind of thought that she was really the 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 book reviewer was really kind of nitpicking. She was like okay. the style is they used too many of the same phrases over and over again. It felt rushed and the story wasn't that great. And she goes, and I solved it halfway through. I'm like, yeah, did. In my brain, I'm like, well, good on you because I I didn't see the twist coming. Mm. <laughs> well, let's At let's end. talk about that because I was thinking, <clears throat> I was thinking like, you know, you're trying to solve the the murder and you're like, okay, well, what character could it have been? Mm-hmm. I don't think it's any of our main characters because right. Vera rules them out. So yep. who's left? And it's like the only person that sort of makes sense when you think sort of meta about how mysteries work is alex but i'm like but why would alex murder him like uh, there's no no reason for that connection right because we didn't know that he was the his father they introduced i felt like it was kind of a scooby-doo you know story scenario where the murder is usually the first or second person introduced in the story oh and pattern to observe and then they they ignore they do all these red herrings and then they come back to it was mr <laughs> yeah i you don't know? know how the how we, the person that you're talking about would have figured no. that out i think no. i i was on the page of like well alex definitely has something to do with it but i don't know what how that is that's connected. how i felt because at the until the very end you had there was no discussion as what the connection between alex and any of the other characters would have been yeah there was like a little seed of it when Julia and Oliver go to visit Oliver's dad. Yes. A little and bit. Don't come they're like, anymore. he lives yeah. really close by. We could walk down there and see him. Uh-huh. And he won't come down and he won't see them. And they I'm didn't a, tell you the And at that point, name. I'm like, oh, that's sad. I wonder why he's, why his dad is so, you know, is like, what is, his, what is their deal, right? I chalked yeah. it up to him being so distraught that his favorite twin was dead. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. I was like, well, he's just sad that his son is dead and now he's like you know in Stuck mourning with or, oliver yeah <laughs> so i'm like okay well i guess that's fine i i did expect it to circle back around to him at some point because i'm like you're just gonna leave it at that that's yeah you introduced him as your best character your best t person in the very beginning and then you don't really talk about him until well i didn't know that they were the same person <laughs> uh <laughs> oh yeah no we i i don't mean about yeah we didn't know that the that they were that you the character when the... alex what alex is key role was maybe yes and you wanted to know more about the father i wanted to know and, both. Then, and okay. we did yeah. not know that they were the same one person. and the same yeah yeah i actually don't try to figure mysteries out i don't all. intentionally but i'm like but i can't help it i'm like but but who did who done it you know well, that's fair that's fair i mean that is kind of the mystery part is the who done it yeah but more i don't want to i like i just want to get to the end and you want to be told yeah. yeah i want to be told that's yes. well <laughs> In my br- in the back of my brain is always that little nagging thing that says, "But what about this person that they introduced early on? They introduced enough. They introduced enough of Alex being there, being there every day, and he's always kind of sad. And this was before Marshall, you know, died. Right, space costs money, so like if they're gonna spend that, they much spent time, space. I'm like, yeah. what is the point of this character? Like, why did we spend so much time with them well, at the beginning? Or like, of the novel? okay, like like on CSI, right? They they may go over the various things of the crime scene and they'll say oh and we and they'll take this back into evidence and then you don't hear about it until later, but you know if they took the time to show something and take it into evidence, that it's going to be important later. It was most of the time. Most sometimes of it. it's bad editing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. But I guess Alex was like was like Chekhov's tea customer, right? Like you saw yes. at the yes. at the beginning, and yes. he's going to come back. Um, <laughs> Well, literally. Yeah. <laughs> um, I lost that train of thought. So okay. Thank you for your well, attention. Let's just move right yeah. on. Thank okay. you for your attention. <laughs> so were you surprised by the ending and the reveal of how Marshall's death actually occurred? I wasn't surprised, but I was satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I was like, okay, yeah, that, that works out well. I'm happy yeah, with that. Because I exactly. definitely did not suspect it all along. Uh, the clues, I don't know. I think if they had <sighs> mentioned Bird's Nest earlier in the novel, it would have been too obvious to be like, yeah. oh. But I don't think there was any mention of it until later on yes. when he had the tea. Maybe when she made the tea for him at the very mm, beginning, but I, know I don't I started remember. thinking about that, but I wasn't going to go back and look because it 
it's the audiobook. Yeah. Um, I remember what that train of thought was. Yeah, I okay. didn't suspect Alex very much because I just took him as more painting <coughs> the reality of her life. Like, yeah, like, like a scene a setting. Scenery. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and his character definitely was important for that. Yeah. You know, he you need it would have been too bleak if she had nobody. Right. Right, right, right. You know, but there but then they did mention there was a couple days where he didn't come. Yeah. And, and he's the only customer that I could think of that was, or the only other character that I could think of that hadn't circled back yet where I'm like, well, he's kind of the only person left. Right. Like, I don't know who else it could have been unless they, it totally came from left field, you know? Well, I was expecting it from left field. Actually, yeah. But see, but I, I feel like, I feel cheated when they do that. When, when they, yeah, when they just, that's someone weird. I feel, and, yeah. It's like, well, I could never have figured that out. If you mm-hmm. introduce someone at the last minute that you never even talked about. Yeah, I think a good mystery like, should lead you to think that you are on the right track, but you are surprised at the end. Where yeah. you feel like, oh, I'm almost there. But then you're like, oh, no, I, I didn't expect to see that, yeah. <laughs> you know. But you but you feel as you're going, like, I could probably figure this out. There you go. Which I think she, like I said, I think she did a good job of. <laughs> And I think that 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 comes to the last question about how she wrapped it up. Um, did you find it too tidy, too messy, or just right? Just, I was a little right. sad that 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 um, Alex had to go to jail because I don't know why. I because know who called the cops, right? Because they were all like, "Oh, okay, yeah, that's fine." And yeah. then the cops showed up. I thought they were going to be like, "We're not going to tell anybody." No, but then yeah. he had to go to jail, and I was like, "Well, I guess that's fine because Tilly's going to represent him as his lawyer." And like, okay, that's whatever. But I was like, I didn't expect that them to actually call I, the cops on I know him. I kind of wanted to them to let it lie because no one could have known. But and no uh, one cared. Yeah, because it, but <laughs> well, I guess all of her at cared, some but. point. I mean, the cops had to have actually been investigating. I don't but they're think not they going to have gotten it. But they would. Yeah, they no didn't. Way. They didn't. They w- nobody knew it was Alex until he told them. Like yeah. it was me. Yeah. Yeah, I I was a little sad that he had to Someone you know go to it. jail for that, but I mean I guess that's fair, but I didn't ex- I didn't see that coming. <clears throat> so that might be where it's too tidy. Yeah, where it's a little too goody two shoes. Yeah, you could have left it. That would have been yeah. totally satisfied. Yeah, but you know some people would have said, but that's not right. He got away with mur- with uh, killing somebody. I suppose it also wasn't murder. Probably... It was it was murder. It was murder. Yeah, it was he did it. He killed his son. <laughs> I think it that I I suppose they could have you know been mixed in with it if the cops ever did figure it out and knew that they knew then you're sort of like an accessory or whatever so yeah. i guess that that is probably not cool like i i guess you probably don't want to live <laughs> right with, and with this that. way when you face the music you don't have to be crushed under the guilt yeah, too. yeah. so he was probably gonna just disappear into nothing because he was isolating himself yeah and he didn't know that they were all working to try and figure it out mm-hmm. i think he was just gonna let it lie and be like yeah, he's gone. Sad. Yeah. But then when everybody figured it out, he was like, okay, I guess, well, I should go to jail for this. <laughs> uh, I have two other notes as I was reading. Yes. So I am a rooster in my Chinese zodiac. Oh, but nice. I do not feel like I share the lauded personality traits of waking up early and all that. No. <laughs> and so I'm like, maybe I should have been a pig. <laughs> I don't know. You we used- can trade. Wait, wait. You, you used to go to when you when you oh, did just because i you did can the yolk... wake up early karen doesn't mean i want to yeah <laughs> but does every rooster like to wake up early yes i think it's i think that's the thing. defining rooster? no not... i'm a dragon no. oh yeah. i think that's the defining uh, aspect of a rooster <laughs> yeah none of us have the right age gap to be the same my sister and i, I are forget both what i am how do i find how do i find out what, what i am on the chinese 1964 uh, yeah you are a dragon oh we're both dragons oh look at that oh. we're dragon ladies dragon my eldest is a dragon Okay, now I got. It. So, what are the traits of a dragon? Um, I put charismatic, intelligent, confident, powerful, naturally lucky, and gifted. All right, there you go. Sounds right. Some of those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I love that she signs her texts with her son. First of all, I love that she signs them uh-huh. <laughs> like they're tiny letters every time, and then with kind regards because that's how I sign all my emails. <laughs> Did you do? You- I guess you don't email me that often, so with kind I want you to regards. end every Slack message with kind regards. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna happen. <laughs> not gonna happen. <laughs> that is not the nature of it. Well, thank you so much for 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 doing this lighthearted murder mystery with me. Yeah, um, it was fun. Like I said, so Jesse Q Sutanto. It's it, there's a they're very clear on how they pronounce her name Sutanto. 
um, her, I highly, highly recommend dial A for aunties. It's another one of those things where somebody dies and they try to cover it up and it goes horribly, horribly wrong. <laughs> um, but good things come from, good things come from it. So, so what else have you read this month? I'll go first. I have yeah, yeah, go. Oh, I, I was I asking Karen, but yeah. oh, well, <laughs> she looks like she's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to, I have to pull up my list. Okay. okay. So Kevin and I took a long road trip. We went to Ensenada, um, which is, I hope this will not be an offensive opinion. It feels like Ventura South. It's okay. like the same terrain as Ventura. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mostly sleepy beach town that livens up when the, um, when the uh, cruise ships come into port, but the food was amazing. Nice. Uh, so that was a long trip. It was like eight hours each way. Yeah. And then we did a lot of driving around in the region. So we listened to Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Have you guys heard mm -mm, of this mm -mm. at all? It's a newish series about this. It's in the dark academia field. Mm -hmm. um, these this faraway mythical place where they use dragons to fight um, their enemies and these uh, all the kids have to go into enlistment and some of them become dragon riders. Whoa. So we read a review of it before we chose our book that said it's like the best book this person had ever read and they can't tell you more about it. Just trust that it's their new favorite book. Well, okay. that's the review we're giving of Project Tail Mary, which right. I stand by. Mm -hmm. Total favorite book. <clears throat> so I'm like, okay, Kevin. I read that. It uh, was great. so good. Yeah, good. <laughs> um, so we put it on and it's it's like, it's okay, actually. Kevin didn't realize he was signing up for Young Adult, but I feel yeah. like every super hyped book right. is Young Adult anymore. Right. Um, and it's good and we're engaged and I'm interested in what's going to happen next. It is a steamy, steamy romance. <laughs> so that's a new and exciting thing to do on your anniversary <laughs> trip is to listen to an audiobook with steamy sex scenes. Oh, no. <laughs> it was interesting. <laughs> Um, so I, I don't know the, like the jury's out on what that did for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, then I read, I read on my own remarkably bright creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. And you may have seen it in the bookstores. It's got a really colorful illustration oh, yeah, yeah. of an octopus on it. Yep. So it's a story being told from partially from the point of view of a great Pacific octopus oh. in an aquarium in somewhere around like, you know, a few hours away from Seattle on the Washington coast. And then, these a young man and this woman and they're all having these like pivotal turning points in their lives and how they connect with each other and how they are connected mm. so good so good um and even though i enjoyed most of all eating um octopus chicharrones in uh mm -hmm. <laughs> you didn't feel bad about that i did but uh it's not a great pacific <laughs> octopus which okay. is why kevin said i'm like i just read this great book starring an octopus <laughs> mm, this is so good though he's like it's not a great pacific octopus it's fine Anne. You're like, okay, <laughs> they're, they're, little, they're little stupid octopuses yeah 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 <laughs> uh then I read The Lost Apothecary by Sarah I Penner. I loved it. Oh, yeah. I really liked it, too. La La the Lost Apothecary? It? I think I talked about it oh. in one of our book clubs, but I read it probably I really absorbed that. <laughs> May, April. I don't know. All right. I loved it. Yeah, I really liked it, too. She is about vengeance, <coughs> Yes, this author, because I'm also reading her next book, The London Science Society. But I'm yeah, I haven't started that one yet. I borrowed it and then I let it like go back to the library. I never got to it, but I, I got about halfway when I had to return to the library. So I'm reading the ebook on the hoopla. Okay, um, I am enjoying being a good library citizen. Again. Yes, um, it's wonderful. <laughs> um, yeah, I loved that book. I have to say just really quickly about the London Science Society. I know we don't try not to talk about the books we're in the middle of. It had this disappointing thing of like. I know that you're the bad guy, dude. <clears throat> like when he reveals he's the bad guy, I'm like, duh. I know. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> so that's kind of where I had to stop, actually, yeah. is I was like, ah, 
Yeah. Duh. I mean, nothing <laughs> about this had any veil over you not being the bad guy, mm. which I'm hoping is the point. Because yeah, the maybe lost, that's the veil. Yeah. Right? The Lost Apothecary had such a satisfying. Yes. That was beautiful. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry I didn't absorb that you read that. No, I loved it. Oh, so good. Um, and then I started the series that will take me a while, uh, the Sarah J. Moss, A Court of Thorn and Roses. Oh, yeah. Which is another Beauty and the Beast storytelling. And mm. I'm enjoying that. Nice. It's got a good twist. Like, the, you, you get these hyped books and you have the real negative people. Yeah. And then the real positive people and not a lot in between. Yes. <laughs> I loved it or I hated it. Right. And I, I'm... I think that Sarah J. Moss, I'm, I think we're going to see her evolve a lot as I go through these books because they're massive. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Um, and I think she did a very artful retelling of what Beauty and the Beast could be. Mm. Oh, good, good. Nice. So, Karen. I got my pile. All right. So, if you're into, a, if you want to listen to a very short, only four hours, audible story, Cat and Vivian is really good. Uh, that came up suggested to me, so uh -huh. I have to check it out. So it's a sharp and shocking mystery. Oh, um, somebody was telling me about this. It it's a, So Vivian is a former reporter and a newlywed. She doesn't know what to do with herself after an incident with her husband forces her to question their partnership and future. Um, yearning for the ocean air and a sense of home, she retreats to Tybee Island to clear her head and visit her nana, a retired um, PI who now struggles with dementia. The phone rings. Catherine Grant, housewife living in a private development, woke up to find her husband and their baby girl missing, and she's desperate for help. So it's it's a very very interesting story and very shocking. And it's it's a mm -hmm. um, um, the other one if you're into if you're still into the creepy stuff <laughs> we for don't, life. We don't swim here, and I will lend this to you if you want. Nope, nope. I'll look for it, but but you can't audible lend book, and books. But the but the audible book is also really really good. She's it's she's the reason no one goes in the water and she will make them pay it's really good so uh that's by vincent Torado, and that was the second book this just came out we don't swim here like a month ago uh the earlier book that called burn down rise up is set in the bronx with um Creatures that take over other people's bodies. Oh, body snatchers. <laughs> well, sort of, but you can sort see of? you can see the little insect kind of thing that it's that's. Um, there are only three rules. Three rules to live by for the next hour if we wanted to survive. Number one: before three a.m., but no earlier than two forty-five, flip a coin three times to decide between two directions. Two: begin the journey the minute it is three a.m. and chant "We are Echo Bound" three times. Continue in the direction chosen. Three, do not end the journey before 4 a.m. If you try, you will become part of the journey. If you break the rules, there are consequences. Interesting. And then on um, a, a nonfiction route, I've been reading emotion, um, Just Finished Emotional Labor, The Invisible Work, Shaping Our Lives, and How to Claim Our Power. It is really good talking about the work as women that we do. Um, not just women, but even men. Just the just dealing. What is emotional labor? How is it used? How, um, even recognizing what it is like, how it forms our society, who benefits from it, who is, you know, how do we gain some of that back so that we are not expending more than we are receiving? So nice. that is really good. That's by Rose Hackman. And, um, that's one I did do the audible version as well as the, the paper bag, the, the paper one, I'm going to go and reread and I'm going to hand, we're going to, we're going to, I know my husband got a book and I know he's going to want me to read it and it's by someone I really, really hate. <laughs> um, and, uh, so I'm like, you know what? I will read it and I'm going to have him read this. <laughs> that seems so very fair. if I'm not willing to read a book that it's by Candace Owens, <laughs> know who that is um yeah look her up she's she's pretty vile but anyway yeah, wants you to <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't think that she's one of those super super conservative but 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 toxic on the toxic side of things she just she says things like like covid was a was a scam oh. it was a hack i mean it was a hack okay well yeah. anyway uh, yeah so <laughs> It's important to know what all sides are saying. Yeah, yeah. If anyway, you can do that emotionally. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm willing to do the emotional labor because I want him to read the book. <laughs> so, Fair enough. So, and I can't ask him to read something that I want him to read if I'm not willing to. Right on. Even if I know I'm not going to agree with it, but at least I will read it and be able to come up with points with why I don't agree with it. Oh, I had heard this lady of this lady. Yeah. She went after Joe Siwa. Yeah. Katie, what are you reading? I read a book called, that's been on my list for a while, of um, one that I was like, I'm going to read that eventually, um, Before the Coffee Gets Cold. By, oh, I've heard ooh. that's a great book. It was great. Toshikazu Kawaguchi. Um, it was great. I loved it. It's sort of sort, short and sweet, emotional, made me cry, Aww. sweet but also sad, but very, very good. Um, and I think there's two or three in the series. I've only read the first one. Right. Um <coughs> But I loved it. It's about a um, coffee shop in um, Japan, and it's a sort of a mystical kind of place, and you can like be sort of travel through time there. Ooh. And um, it is originally written in Japanese and translated to English, and it's great. Except I was confused by some names because I listened to it. I think if I was reading it, it would have been easier. But, like, there were three or four names that started with a K, and I was confused as to which one was which. But don't let that stop you from reading it, because it was very, very good. Um, so I, I really liked that. And that was all that the uh, extracurricular reading I did this month. Hmm. But I'm excited to jump into one of the uh, others in the series. I think there's three, or maybe the third one's coming out. That's what it looks like from, um, from online. Though. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard, I've considered it for the book club a couple of times when I was looking for shorter ones. <laughs> yes, it was very good. Um, cool. Well, I think it's my turn to pick our next book. Mm -hmm. I was having a hard time deciding between two, so I'm going to give you guys two options. Ooh. Do you want to read about aliens or fairies? Oh, gosh. <gasps> aliens, because I'm already doing fairies. So, what is your two percent? I would take either. I like either. Oh, but, yeah. but I'm in an alien mode. So, okay, yeah. Cool, 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 okay. Cool. So we're gonna read a book called The Road to Roswell by Connie oh, Willis. Oh, cool. Oh, I love Connie Willis. I've not read anything else by, I love by them, her. but I've read like five of her other titles. She's Ooh. awesome. Yeah, she's and a, I have uh, not read this one. A uh, pretty well known science fiction writer. So it well, says and history, time travel kind of stuff too. Um Let's see. When level-headed Francie arrives in Roswell, New Mexico for her roommate, for her college roommate's UFO-themed wedding, complete with a true believer bridegroom, she can't help but roll her eyes at all the wide-eyed talk of aliens, which obviously don't exist. Imagine her surprise then when she's abducted by one. Odder still, her abductor is far from what the popular media have led her to expect, with a body like a tumbleweed and a mass of lightning-fast tentacles. Nor is Francie the only victim oh, in an awesome. alien's abduction spree. For long, he has acquired a charming con man, before long, sorry, um, named Wade, a sweet old lady with a casino addiction, a retiree with a huge RV and a love for old westerns, and a UFO chasing nut job who's thoroughly convinced that the alien intends to probe them or take over the planet. <laughs> but the more Francie gets to know the alien, the more convinced she becomes that he's not an invader, he's in trouble and she has to help him. Only she doesn't know how or even what the trouble is. Part, uh, part alien abduction adventure, part road trip saga, part romantic comedy. The road to Roswell is packed full of men in black, Elvis impersonators, tourist traps, <gasps> rattlesnakes, chemtrails, and closer counters of the third, fourth, and fifth kind. Hey. Can Francie, stuck in a neon green bridesmaid's dress, save the world or make it back to the wedding? Um, this was a uh, recently released, I think, or recently they got it in at uh, Timber. Tamber, and I was like, oh, that seems like something that I want to read. So that is my pick for. Oh, that sounds book. great. Yeah. What was the other book? Well, I might save it for another one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Um, well, if you guys have read um, either Vera Wong or if you are planning to read the next one, we would love to hear from you about it. Um, you can always. Talk to us on Instagram or shoot us an email or, you know, if you have any recommendations for future books, we'd love to hear it because we would like to talk about what you want us to read um, and check out our Patreon if you are a fan and you want more from us. Um, and we will see you guys in the next episode. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Strings Unraveled is a production of Strings and Things Studio with Anne Lecrevin-Cazzoli, Katie Von Rader-Fraker, and Karen Wilmoth. 
recorded and edited by Katie Von Rader Fraker. Find us online at stringsandthingsstudio.com or on Facebook or Instagram at stringsandthingsstudio. You can email us at stringsandthingsinfo at gmail.com. 